This is Twit. Quonk, this is actually called the Squat. Qual Squalcom Cap Nap This the Qualcomm <laughs> Snapdragon Tech Summit. And That's they great. did announce the 845, but I think they got scooped just a little teeny weeny <laughs> bit by Microsoft, bit, yeah. which yeah, announced yeah. that finally I mean, WOA is here, Windows on ARM. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, they did that announcement here, right? And so uh, right. there are three days of keynotes, so three days of uh, announcements. There'll be a third day tomorrow, which will focus on the 5G stuff and some of the other initiatives they're working on. But the big news today was the 845, which is obviously the next generation mobile processor. And the big news yesterday, at least from my perspective, there was more to it than this, but from I think from all of our perspectives at Windows Weekly, was the announcement of the first Snapdragon-based uh, Windows 10 PCs. So, uh, who are the manufacturers, and when do we so the get them, and how much? Yeah. You may recall um, a little bit of rumor, <laughs> or, or news, as we might have called it in December 2016, um, that the first ARM-based PCs would arrive in December 2017. And so, we've announced them, but they're not actually shipping now. So, the two that we know about are the HP Elite X2. Um, and HP, by the way, sells an Elite X2 today that's based on Intel uh, chipsets and so forth. And I'm sure they're going to update that probably announce it at CS and it will look like the version that they showed off here. But the one they showed off here is thinner and lighter and gets better battery life and it's based on Qualcomm chipsets. Um, and also uh, an ASUS device as well. Um, both, of the, uh, I'm sorry, I should say, uh, we know that Lenovo is going to announce something uh, next month at CS. We know that other PC manufacturers uh, have said that they're on board with this initiative so we can expect to see those devices po probably at CS, right? I think that would be the obvious time frame uh, for those announcements. Um, I, we've got, you know, we've got Don McGuire coming out later from Qualcomm, and I have some questions. I have some questions in general. I have some questions for him um, sort of in the wake of this announcement, right? Because uh, in some ways, there were a couple of surprises. Um, <laughs> one of them has to do with the timing, right? So here we are at the end of 2017. We've announced uh, Qualcomm Snapdragon 835 processor-based PCs. They've announced it in 845, right? And so how does that work? Um, and also the fact that these devices run Windows 10s exclusively is so, so at least so far, uh, which was a surprise to me, uh, because I feel like the That's always disappointing. It, I'm yeah, so uh, it's two sides to that. Upgradable to Windows 10 Pro At yeah. a, for a fee for fifty dollars or for free. No, for free. For free. Um, for free for a limited time. And in Asus's materials, they said till September 2018, which is longer than what Microsoft has said. So this um, is yeah. kind of like the Surface March. laptop then. This is... Yeah, yeah, but, I think that's fair. Is there uh, a reason why Windows 10 S for these ARM devices? Well, see, that, that that's... Uh, we're going to ask that question because I, I'm i a little confused. But I, I would say, you know, when you think about the future of the PC and, and you look at it from Microsoft's perspective, from like sort of a platform perspective, there are two big initiatives and, and three if you want to divide the second one into two parts. The first is Windows 10 S, right, which is the simpler non-legacy version of Windows 10, smart, uh, but not necessarily ready right you know today for everybody. Um, there's the always connected PC initiative, which brings always uh, on connectivity, um, better battery life, uh, instant on, and so forth. And then you get the Qualcomm piece of it, where you get uh, really sharp improvements in battery life and instant on uh, performance, for example. So um, I, I sort of viewed these things as three separate things. Um, in some ways, what we're seeing here is a combination of at least two of those. So that was a little unexpected. It's kind of interesting, but that's something we should. We should talk to Qualcomm about. <laughs> yeah, I think my guess is 10s is the reason they're going with 10s, or they'll, the reason they'll say they're going with 10s is for the battery, right? So they'll say we've already shown that 10s gets longer battery life than any version of Windows 10, so that's why we put it on there. It's also um, what I think of as like the reliability of that yeah. kind of thing. In other words, mm -hmm. when you uh, limit the experience to the store apps, essentially. You're, yeah. you have a sort of a guarantee of how those things are going to behave on the system. Whereas if you start mm -hmm. introducing x86 apps, even on Intel, right, there's a lot yeah. of unreliability there, depending on the apps you're running. Um, yeah. And it, uh, when you add the emulation factor on Qualcomm, it's it's kind of an unknown. And uh, I think a lot of us are, are particularly interested in testing that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I think well, obviously what everyone's shooting for here is the best possible experience. And yeah. when you think about the way that Microsoft has marketed Windows 10s, a Qualcomm-based PC kind of fits into that very nicely because those customers, in Microsoft's eyes, value those things that are inherent to the system, you know, the reliability, mm -hmm. the battery life, uh, and the consistency. Will all the uh, new hardware run on an 845, or is are they going to use some? Mm -mm. No. Nope. 
835 for what they've announced. Yeah. Yeah. So the, the, right, that is what okay. they've announced. Although uh, that's based the on older an Snapdragon. Yeah, based on a comment that was uh, said on stage today, there will be 845 based systems at some point. Right. I, I don't know if that means six months or nine months or a year or whatever, but um, that appa appears to be in the in the cards as well. Mm -hmm. But not right away, right? The first gen. What other? Yeah, I mean, I shouldn't even say older. Eight thirty five is the current Snapdragon, mm -hmm. and eight forty five is the next generation, coming next generation. Yeah. What's yeah. what are their specs? Uh, eight gigs of RAM, four gigs. What kind of what kind of hardware yeah. are we going to get here? Yeah, uh, the basic so, is four gigs. I'm sorry, go ahead, Mary. Yeah. Uh, I was just going to say the Asus one. They said four gigs of RAM, sixteen gigs of storage for five ninety nine. Eight gigs, two fifty six gig of storage, seven ninety nine. Yeah, and the HP didn't say. Don't know yet, uh, right. I'm not sure on the existing Elite, Elite X2, but I'd be surprised if it mm -hmm. came with less than eight. I, I suppose on a system is where you're called, focusing. I'm sorry. Is it called Elite X2? Because there's an Envy X2, and, or is I'm the sorry. Envy? Yeah. Okay. I believe it's. No, yeah, I, I, I wasn't sure if there were two different brands, yeah, like the Intel are. and the. <laughs> there yeah. are. I'm screwing it up. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's Envy X2. Sorry about that. Envy um, X2. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're right. Um, I, I don't know for sure, but it seems like on the NV X2, sorry, an X86, probably 8 gigs is the minimum, but they might go with 4 in this version because, um, again, we're, we're kind of optimizing for battery life over everything else. Right. And the type of user that would want this machine is more concerned with that than, say, raw performance. Do developers mm -hmm. have to change their apps? These, you'd have to recompile everything for Windows on ARM. What does this mean for apps, for software? If you're a store app, it doesn't mean anything because you get that automatically. Right. In okay. Yeah, it's 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 a checkbox. In fact, it's checked by default. And so, when you create an app in the store, you know that's a capability you get. This dates back to the Windows RT days. It's just a and you know phone as well. Um, it's it's a capability that just exists in the platform. The the open question here though is of course x86 you know desktop apps that you might download from the internet, um, Google Chrome, iTunes, whatever. Uh, out of the box, obviously, those things aren't going to run on Windows 10 S. Um, if you upgrade to Pro, they will, and that's you know this is the thing I think a lot of people are super mm -hmm. interested in, just to see what that looks like, you know, on on ARM. Yeah, and the emul yeah. you know the emulator to me was the thing I was surprised they actually announced and had ready yesterday because they said they were going to do that, but I was thinking because of that threat from Intel over patents that maybe they wouldn't actually have that ready as part of yeah. it yeah, right yeah, off yeah. the bat. But it is. Um, and they told me when I talked to them, they said, you know how we do 16-bit windows on 64-bit windows with windows on windows? You know, the wow thing. They said we extended yes. that. And that's how we're going to emulate 16-bit um, yeah. Win32 apps on top of ARM. Right. And if that you look at the yeah, sense. if you look at the diagrams they have, it actually says the wow abstraction layer is there on top of the emulator. It's, so that is how they're doing it. But it makes it's consistent. That's the you yeah. know the, the states back literally twenty years when they made Windows NT and mm -hmm. it was platform independent, right? And we didn't yep. you know for most of its lifespan we've been running on Intel basically or x eighty six, um, but that capability was always there. It was one of the things that made Windows mm -hmm. RT a possibility, whatever that was mm -hmm. five six years ago, um, and it's enabling this today as well. Yeah.